right guys, so in this video we're going to be knocking out a chi-squared problem. Um, so a lot of times chi-squared problems give students trouble. I promise it's not that terrifying. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at our progeny ratios. So we're going to have this, uh, the problem would say something um, along the lines of we're going to cross two heterozygotes. The red allele is dominant to the white allele. Um, does this follow a normal dominant inheritance pattern? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first actually cross them, right? So we can set up a, or a, a, a Punnett square right here. And once we do that, you guys should be pretty fast at this by now. So we're going to end up with exactly what you guys think. It should be a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio, right? So we should have 3 red and one white. Because we said that, we said at the beginning that the red is dominant to the white, supposedly, right? That's what we're here to test out. So they're gonna say we had 400 babies of whatever's red and whatever's white, and um, this is the ratios that we ended up with, right? So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna do this thing called a chi-squared. This little weird symbol is chi-squared. So we're going to plug this into this chi-squared formula. Um, and what you're going to see is we're going to have observed minus expected squared divided by the expected. And then we're going to add that up for all of our traits. And then we're going to do some other funky statistics stuff. And I'll talk about that at the end. But the question here is, right, like here's our observed, right? We ha they have to give you the observed. But how do we find our expected is the real question here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, three-fourths of them are supposed to be red, right? If everything went according to plan, three-fourths of them should be red. So we're going to look at our total of 400, and I decided to make it easy on myself with the math. So if three-fourths are supposed to be red, and we had 400 total progeny, we would expect 300 red plants. And then we're going to do the same thing with the white. Your math on the test will probably be slightly harder than this. Plug it into a calculator, three-fourths versus one-fourth, or whatever they say is the um, inheritance pattern, right? This is a normal dominance inherit inheritance pattern with two heterozygotes, but you have to actually do the cross for yourself, and it all depends on what kind of inheritance pattern they're asking about. But for our normal one, one-fourth would be white because we have that three to one phenotypic ratio, one fourth of 400 is 100. Now we have our observed and our expected values. So now we're gonna look at this funky formula and try and figure out what it actually means. So we have observed, or we have observed, minus expected squared divided by expected. So the first thing we're gonna do, and then we have to add those up for each of our traits. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our observed 312 minus 300 we're going to square that, and we're going to divide by our expected, 300. So when we do that, we're going to get 0 0.48 for this guy, right? But we're not done yet because this says the sum of all of them, right? So we have to do this for our other trade. Notice here, if you have a third, a fourth, a fifth trade, you have to do this for each individual trade and add them all up at the end. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take 88 minus 100, and notice how you square it, so you should never end up with a negative number. Negative number squared is a positive number. And we're going to divide by our expected. And this is going to give us 1.44. Right, so now we've done this for each of our individual um, traits. And then we're going to add them together. So 0.48 plus 1.44 is 1.92. Oh, you can't see that. 1.92 is our chi-squared value. Um, that doesn't tell us everything we need to know. One thing I do want to point out here, see how this says chi-squared? The squared doesn't mean anything. I don't want you to take the square root of this to find chi. Chi doesn't exist in genetics world. We have chi-squared, and this is how we find chi-squared. We're not going to ever square root it, and if you ever see a chi, don't ever square it. Just don't worry about it leave it as it is. So we have our 1.92 here, that's our chi-squared value. What we have to do is you guys are on your test, you are gonna have this big chart. Um, and what you're gonna see is um, we're gonna have on the top, we're gonna end up having chi-squared values or p-values or something. Um, and then we're gonna have degrees of freedom, right? So our top will probably have p-values. And you're wondering what's a p-value? 
For genetics, I'm gonna say go ahead and don't worry about it too much. If you guys have taken stats, this is gonna make a lot more sense to you. But if you're in genetics, all it p-value basically says is what's the chance that we're right? Because that's what we're trying to figure out, right? Is there a reasonable chance um, that this is not an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern, right? So um, the smaller our p-value is, so a lot of times they say, we're gonna set our p-value for most research stuff at 0 0.05, right? So if our p equals 0 0.05 right there, then what we would do is we would go to 0 0.05 on the top, and then I would go down and I would find my degrees of freedom. If you guys are looking at a chart, that'd make this a ton easier. Um, but I'm gonna go down to my degrees of freedom and you're like, What's, what are the degrees of freedom? For a chi-squared problem, degrees of freedom equals N minus one, okay? And you're like, well, what's N? N is just the number of different traits we have. So um, in this case, it's gonna be two is the number of traits. And so we do two minus one equals one our degrees of freedom is one. So what I'm gonna to do to finish this problem and find out the burning question we've all been asking, is this actually a autosomal dominant or do we have reason to believe that this is autosomal dominant? Obviously because you're never gonna get the perfect value here, right? That's something to consider. Um, chances are if you flip a coin 10 times, it's not gonna be five and five. Um, all we're trying to figure out here is are these numbers close enough to where we can say, yeah, this probably is an autosomal dominant um, way of inheritance. And what we're gonna have, so what we're gonna have is we're gonna go to our p-value of 0.05. So I go across to my p-value of 0.05. I go down to my degrees of freedom as one. I would assume that would be the first one. Um, and then you go down there and it's gonna give you a chi-squared value. And so what we look at is um, our chi-squared values, it's gonna give you a set of numbers. You say, okay, where is my number? Is it between this and this, or this and this? Um, and so what we're looking for on that table is uh, 1.92. So you're probably not gonna see 1.92 on there, don't freak out, that's okay. Um, you might see something that's like 1.5 and like 2.8. All right, well, beautiful, that's where our 1.92 should be between. Um, and let's say that was 0 0.01 and 0 0.05. So if my numbers are between a p-value, so right, we were looking at our numbers, and then I track those numbers up, and I say, okay, if it was between 1.5 and 2.9 or whatever I said, then it's between 0 0.01 and 0 0.05. So my answer would be a p-value of greater than 0 0.01, but less than 0 0.05, right? So we said we were gonna use a p-value of 0 0.05. So if our value is less than 0 0.05, um, which for this one, I don't actually have a table in front of me, we're just gonna assume I do. Um, for this one, we decided our p-value here, whatever we found on our table, is less than 0 0.05. So that means at the 0 0.05 significance level, we actually do have proof because it is lower than 0 0.05. That's an important thing to keep in mind. If that p-value is lower than 0 0.05, we do have pretty good reason to believe that this is different, right? This is gonna be different than our actual value. Um, uh, and so we can say this is probably not a autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts in this video are referencing material from this specific textbook. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during normal business hours. For more information about our services, please visit our website www.baylor.edu. Thank you.